hey, it's finally time to prove a point. What camera or what camera systems you use these days is really not that important. These days, most cameras will do the job and they'll do it well. And if you don't agree with this, then you're probably just buying into the hype. Let's play a little game. I bet you will not be able to tell the difference between this photo, this one, this one, and this one. What camera system did I use for each image? Where's the full frame system? Where's the cropped sensor one, like Fuji's and Sony's? If you're joining me during the premiere of this video, type what you think right now. And if you're watching this later, then take notes and include all of them in one comment after you watch the video. The key is that you note your guesses and don't change them after I give you the answers. You see, the thing is, whenever in my videos I mention what gear I used, and I've used a few cameras over the years, I usually get these wild claims like, oh, such and such camera is much better. Your photos were way better when you were shooting full frame. Some of you have even felt bad for me for using the Micro Four Thirds system for so long. Others feel bad that I have not used their brand of choice. A lot of Fuji people here, though I have used Fuji cameras in the past. People forget the importance of lenses, which is a whole other topic, but above all, it appears that so many of you forget the importance of striving to be a good photographer. Let me show you another group of photos. This photo here, this one, this one, and this one. What camera system do you think I used for each one of these images? Type it out now or take notes and include all of them in a comment later. I will give you the answers of course, but I wanna see, can you come close to guessing even just the system that I used? Because so many of you are so eager to voice your opinion when you already know the answer. But anyway, I feel that people are much too obsessed with gear and with brands. And this brand allegiance or even fighting with people over which camera brand is better in comments on Facebook or on YouTube or wherever you're doing that, unless you're a brand ambassador, this is such an incredibly utter waste of time. If you actually want to grow as a photographer, just forget about this. Now, of course, there are reasons to choose certain gear or even certain brands over others. And we have our own preferences too, but at the end of the day, these are just tools. Here's a bit of wisdom that a veteran documentary photographer shared with me once. He pointed out that these days, and probably for the last 15 years or so, most pro-level digital cameras are far more capable than most photographers. Think about that for a second. I truly believe that when a photographer knows what they're doing, you won't be able to tell what gear they're using. It won't even matter. Let me throw some more of these photos up on the screen. So this one, now this, this here, and the last one. Again, either comment now or take notes and put all of your guesses in a comment later. Commit to your guesses, no cheating. I will explain to you why you might think that I used a certain camera or a certain camera system. There are some things that you've probably come to believe that don't always apply and I want to show you that there are ways around them. And very importantly, I will share with you the five key factors which you must understand to get the most out of any gear and to grow as a photographer. More on that towards the end of the video, but it will start to become clear as this video progresses. By the way, if you want to learn some useful, real stuff about photography, I have a new educational resource. It's called The Photographer's Mindset. I launched it recently and I've included a special discount in the description of this video, as well as the link to it. It will help you become a better photographer much more than running after the latest, greatest gear. Don't click the link just yet. Finish watching the video first. Back to the first group of photos now. I'll shortly tell you what they were shot with. First, what's one of the things that you've been told about different camera systems? It's that smaller sensor cameras are associated with less dynamic range. And okay, that's accurate for most part. However, what does this lesser dynamic range look like in real life when it's put next to a uh, photo taken with a full frame sensor camera? 
more importantly, what does it look like when the photographer works intelligently within the limits of whatever camera system they're using? Remember, the full frame camera system is usually associated with a pretty wide dynamic range, like here, and here, and like in this photo. But once again, what was shot with what camera system? It's pretty hard to get the detail in the dark areas and something as bright as this arm. It's actually almost very borderline overexposed, but still very good dynamic range overall. And this photo was made with the Fuji X100S. That's a cropped sensor camera. This photo has really good dynamic range and it was so easy to either overexpose this bright part or really underexpose everything in the dark area. But everything looks pretty good. So is this made with a full frame sensor camera? Nope, I used the Panasonic Lumix GX80. That's a micro four thirds sensor system. This one, pretty decent dynamic range too. Detail in the relatively dark interior and still you can see some detail outside. What did I use? An even older Micro Four Thirds sensor camera, the Panasonic Lumix GX8. Final image, a very challenging situation. These monks are in a really dark interior and the outside is really bright. So no detail here. I don't think this necessarily detracts from the photo since in life we perceive things in a similar way. From a dark interior, something bright outside might very well appear as a detailless white area. So what camera system? Well, this is the full frame Canon 5D Mark II. So with a full frame sensor camera, you don't automatically just have this insane ability to cover an impossible range of tones. You can still end up with overexposed areas and you still need to be strategic about how you expose your images. And of course, I chose this photo on purpose to demonstrate my point. Here is the second group of images that I showed you. Usually this blurred background, the bokeh, it's something that's instantly associated with the full frame sensor system. And I think that this characteristic is why so many people say, oh yes, your full frame camera photos were so much better because they have this sense of depth to them, right? Like the subjects seem like they just pop out of the frame. So we have bokeh here and here, here too, and here. Which one's which? Is this full frame? Nope. It's that tiny Panasonic Lumix GX80 with a Lumix Leica 43mm f1.2 lens shot wide open. Is this full frame? Nope. This is the Fuji X-E2 with a Voigtlander Helia 75mm f1.8 lens shot wide open. This one? No, again. This is the older Panasonic Lumix GX7 with an Olympus 45mm f1.8 lens, shot wide open. And the last one. This must be full frame. Nope. This is the Sony a6500, a smaller, older, cropped sensor camera with a Sony 35mm f1.8 lens. Of course, shot wide open. So none of these photos were made with a full frame sensor camera. Clearly you don't need a full frame sensor to create this blurred background look, the bokeh. It actually has less to do with the camera system and almost everything to do with the lenses that I used. That's why I put the lenses up on the screen for you just now. Uh, there will be more on lenses in just a little bit. But uh, how many images have you guessed so far? More than five would make you a psychic or you have lasers for eyes, but more likely than not, you probably just guessed a couple. Anyway, I think you are getting my point. You can create great photos with different cameras and different camera systems. If I were to tell you that all of the photos that I just showed you were made with a full frame camera, you probably would believe me.
last group of photos now. In the dark, this is where I most appreciate full frame sensor cameras. But I do want to go through these examples. Again, just to prove my point, when photographers know the limitations of their gear, you probably will not be able to tell what gear they're actually using. So here is this photo of my daughter. I'm using a pretty insanely high ISO, you could say. So now that you know the ISO, this one should be an easy one to guess. You can only really use such high ISOs with full frame sensor cameras. And this was shot with the Sony a7 III, full frame sensor camera with a 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. What about this image? Pretty dark here. I'm all the way at ISO 3200, pretty high and actually about the limit for the Panasonic Lumix GX7 Micro Four Thirds camera. With what was actually not a very fast lens, the Lumix 12-35 f2.8. This photo, real dark situation here. The ISO was at 5000 and this is the Sony a6500, a crop sensor camera with the 35mm f1.8 lens. This scene here seems pretty dark, but the ISO was only at 1000. The shutter speed was high too at 1 250th of a second because it wasn't very dark. The camera I used was the Fuji X100S with the fixed 23mm f2 lens. This setup wasn't amazing in low light, so a little trick. I shot this at dusk. The light from the fire with the not so dark ambient light allowed me to capture much of the detail around here, while still making it look like I am shooting in the dark. I knew the limitations of this camera and that's why I wanted to make sure that I would capture scenes by the fire before it got too dark. And this, I think, is a good segue into the five key factors that I talked about uh, towards the beginning of the video. If you have been paying attention, then some of them have already uh, probably become pretty clear. In any case, I'll start with number one. Number one, you must understand the limitations of your camera and work within them, like I did with the photo of the Nomad Girls by the Fire like I do with any photos in situations that might present a challenge. As long as you're not doing something that the camera is absolutely incapable of, you can get great results. Number two, many limitations are actually due to the lens, not the camera system that you're using. If you've been paying attention when I put the lenses that I use up on the screen, you would have noticed that I use some very good glass that allows me to set a very low f-stop value. That's what allows me to create the bokeh and to shoot in pretty dark situations with smaller sensor cameras. Number three, know how to process your photos effectively. Whenever someone tells me, oh, but such and such camera just has all these great colors, amazing color science, uh, to that I say, well, that's great. And I'm not against great color science, but how many of us actually use photos right out of the camera? You can tweak colors to look virtually however you want in apps like Lightroom, Capture One, or whatever else you're using. Yes, I know that the Fuji has these amazing JPEG color profiles, but I know like one serious photographer who uses those profiles uh, in his professional work and just accepts the colors out of the camera. Now, I'm not saying that those color profiles are not a great thing. It's just that I don't think they're necessarily a decisive factor uh, when we're choosing a camera. Number four, you need to understand light, how to sculpt with it, how to leverage different kinds of lighting scenarios, how to communicate with light. Using light effectively will give your photos a certain quality. It'll make them stand out regardless of what gear you use. I don't want to talk more about light because I actually have a whole video on natural light and there's a free ebook for you to download as well. You can check all of that out here. Number five, spend more time working on the non-technical nuances, like building a rapport with the people you're photographing. 
gaining access, anticipating a moment, or actually getting to some of the amazing places to make photos. My best advice to you is to stop this obsession with chasing the latest, greatest camera gear. And it's hard because, well, the marketing works very well. You, you get excited about seeing all the reviews, all the videos, but ultimately, that's not where it's at. Only when you see that your camera is coming up very short with some very specific requirements that you should even consider getting a new camera. Of course, this will be different for different people, but I think that this is a pretty good barometer, you know, a pretty good way to know whether you actually need a new camera. Rather than search for the perfect camera, try to first perfect yourself as a photographer. Okay, so I already mentioned my educational resource and there's something else. If you don't want to buy anything, that's fine. I won't get too offended, but at least do yourself a favor and join the photographic process. This is my educational website. You can join it absolutely free. There's already a good amount of free content on it. And it's the sort of stuff which will actually make you a better photographer and will probably save you a lot of money along the way too. If you enjoyed the video, please do all the standard stuff. Give me a like, subscribe, and I leave you with some more photos. You might again be surprised what gear I used to make them.